Good morning, everybody. We're doing this again. Welcome to the second vlog of my day. I think what I'm going to do for this vlog, though, is the whole weekend. Uh, well, not the whole weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, it is about 6.30 a.m. on Saturday morning, February 18th. I had to think about that for a second. I released my first vlog yesterday, and you guys had some questions um, about how I squeeze in like my dog, all that kind of stuff. And so I thought that I would vlog for Saturday and Sunday. Um, I did not exercise this morning. I know for you guys doing the shadow work challenge, Saturday is self-study Saturday. Typically Saturdays are like rest days where we don't work out or practice anyway because it's the day of Saturn, which the good side of Saturn is um, karma, it's father time, it's the matrix. And so it's typically Saturday in traditional yoga is a day of reflection, a day of rest. Um, a lot of times I do practice or exercise on Saturdays just because of my schedule and how I can fit it in with my schedule. But today I'm not doing a practice because it is the second day of my cycle. And for me, the second day of my cycle is the like worst day. It's the heaviest day. I did not sleep very well last night. Um, a lot of cramps uh, <laughs> last night, actually. Maybe the ladies will appreciate this. Um, I got into bed last night and I was just cramping so bad. And I had taken a hot bath, but I was just like cramping and not feeling good. And I'd started early Friday morning. So by the evening I was like in it and I turned, we always have, always have the fan on, but I turned the air conditioning on because I was just like, just feeling like shit. And I just wanted that fresh air on my face and my boyfriend was just complaining, complaining. And I was like, listen, listen, you listen. <laughs> the day comes that you're bleeding out like a dead animal, then you can tell me, <laughs> then you can control the air conditioning. But for tonight, since you aren't bleeding out like a dead animal and I am, you can just put a sweatshirt on if you're cold. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, it just, it is what it is, right? We have to go through this once a month. I know, you know, but I should start to feel better by this afternoon and by tomorrow. My cycle is only like really like three days. Um, by the last two days, it's just, it's so light that it's like nothing. So I'm hoping that tomorrow morning I'll be able to work out a practice again. I do, I teach tomorrow. Um, I teach live, so I teach a live class and I really, really, really always, always, always want to do my practice or do my workout before I teach because it sets my body up to be able to um, adjust better and be more presently in my body so that I can service my students better. Um, that's just something that we really talk about a lot in the yoga world. In order for me to be a good teacher, I have to really be in my practice in order to be available for my students' practice. So it's really important to me that tomorrow I get up super early and do, I'm going to be doing bar again tomorrow because it is the third day of my cycle. And the first three days of your cycle is typically, generally speaking, for most women is um, when the uterus is contracting. And so um, tomorrow I'll be doing bar again, probably super early in the morning, not yoga. I'll go back to yoga when um, my, probably by Monday, when my period is not, my uterus is not contracting anymore. So, all right, you guys. So I did get up. I already ate a little something because I was kind of considering just starting blogging tomorrow. Um, but I thought, no, what the hell? I'll do it anyway today. Um, you guys asked about my dog uh, from Monday's video. My, 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 my sweet boyfriend. Uh, days when I am really busy and I have a lot of shows to do, he is the one that will voluntarily take uh, my dog out for me um, after he's out of work. So uh, he typically is the one that will do that for me on days when I have tons of shows to do and tons of work to do. If I lived in a colder climate or a less humid climate, I probably would be able to go take him out in between uh, shootings in between filming but the problem with living in Georgia or if you live in Florida or anywhere where it's super hot and super muggy is that if I take him out on a long like hour walk or something when I come back I am drenched in sweat uh, just because of the weather and I would have to in order to be professional I don't want to show up on somebody else's channel a hot sweaty mess you know I a lot of it it's not just even about you know of course we're all vain like I don't want to be on the internet looking like a drowned rat but I also don't want to show up for somebody else's channel 
uh, not putting my best foot forward. I feel like that's just consideration and kindness to do that. If you're, if you're going on somebody else's channel, um, I always want to be prepared. I always want to give, I always want to deliver a better show on somebody else's channel than on my own channel because it's, it's, um, it means a lot to me when people trust me to come on their show and invite me on their show, like I always wanna like do them a solid, you know, I feel, I feel like that's a, that's a huge honor when people ask you to come on their shows and ask you to come on their shows as a, as a regular guest, like that's, you know, and all the people that I film with, excuse me, my nose is running, all the people that I film with are my friends now too. You know, we all met through YouTube, but we're all actually friends now as well. And so of course I wanna do my friends as solid as well. So with that being said, I, I generally just can't take him out when I'm filming, days where I'm filming a lot. So my boyfriend has volunteered to do that for me. And days that I finish early, I can typically take him out if all I have to do is research after we get back. Um, I have this morning, this Saturday, I am going to be filming with Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa at 10 this morning. It's for my channel. Um, she's going to be doing a sun salutation challenge, uh, coming up within our shadow work challenge. So, um, we're going to film it today. Sorry, I was looking, something flew by the window. I, we're going to be filming it today and it's going to air tomorrow, Sunday morning. So I'll take you guys along for that. And then I think after that, I'm pretty much done for the day. I, I typically work on the weekends as well, but not as much as I work on the weekdays. So I think after I get done with filming with Shanti, um, there might be a couple of things I have to do. I've got to reach out uh, to someone because I'm going to try to get an organic portal episode up uh, this week and I got to figure out a good day to film that. So it might be this afternoon we film it or it might be tomorrow after I teach that we film it, we'll see. Um, and then I'll have the rest of the day free and so hopefully I can take you guys out with uh, my dog on a, around the city of Atlanta, show you where I walk him. We might go to Oakland Cemetery. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. It's supposed to be a really pretty day here in Atlanta. It's kind of chilly today, but it, nonetheless, it's supposed to be chilly for us, I should say. You guys up north and in Canada and like Northern Europe, like you would laugh at what, what we call chilly, but <laughs> for us it's chilly. So um, we'll see what the afternoon brings and then I will So I went to go get in the shower, but alas, my boyfriend beat me to it. And um, he is really fit, so I'm sure it would be very good footage to take a video of him in the shower. He has a lot of, uh, you know, working out with weights and stuff, but <laughs> that's not his he would kill me if I did that. So anyway, I just noticed my bedroom window definitely needs to be clean. I keep the blinds closed most of the time because I am, as you can see, right in the middle of the city. And this, guys, this is the culprit. You see that blue, that blue fence up? I keep talking about all the construction next door. This is what's going on. This is sometimes when you you hear the bang, 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 bang happening in the video, the in the background of my videos. This is why. That's what's happening. So they're building a high rise right here. So yeah. Good morning, Mr. Sugar Booger. Good morning. This is Ravi. Look at that boy. Look at that smug mug. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He sleeps in the bedroom with us at night. But he's already been out this I know. Hi, baby. He's a papa's boy. He's got his blue sweater on. He loves clothes. Ravi loves clothes. If you hold a sweater out, he will come and jump into it. Oh, he's gonna do a look. He's doing his magic mouth. He does this when you pet him. His mouth just opens and closes. His magic ears too. When he gets really excited, he his ears pull back. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Ravi, they wanted more footage of you, buddy. Should we open you up your own channel? Say Ravi is from India. He was born in India on the main streets of Mysore in the area of Gokulam. He didn't spend a long time on the streets though. He was rescued as like a three month old puppy. And then he flew on an airplane. He went to Paris, France first. And then he came over to Atlanta and he lives with us now. He's been with us ever since. Yep, so his name is Ravi, if you guys can see his name. It's, we gave him an Indian name. Ravi. We think he, they, he's technically called an Indian pariah, which is a street dog. But if you look at his coat compared to other Indian pariahs, he's very blonde. 
very blonde like his mama. <laughs> and his ears flop. Most Indian pariahs ears stick up. His flop. And so Ravi has a lot, if you look up the dog, the chippy potty dog, uh, Ravi has a lot of chippy potty in him. And chippy potties were uh, the dogs in India that were um, owned by the Maharajas, the princes of India. In Mysore, where I go in India, there is a big, a big palace, a big the, uh, the, the Maharaja's palace in Mysore. So it makes sense that there are a lot of chippy potties, or street dogs that have chippy potty in them. The chippy potties themselves were not street dogs; they were palace dogs. But it makes sense that some of the dogs would have gotten out and would have mingled with the. Uh, Oh, you rub your belly? Is that what you're asking? Oh, is your arm caught? Okay, let me get your arm. Uh, would have gotten out and would have uh, mingled with the, some of the street dogs. So I always say Ravi is a combination of lady. He's lady in the tramp, basically. <laughs> he had a, a one parent that was royalty, <laughs> was a chippy body, and another parent that was totally street. So he is, he is a product of lady in the tramp. He acts like royalty, though. We call him the, or I call him, he's got two, he's got a lot of nicknames. One is the Maharaja of Midtown, because I live in Midtown, so we call him the Maharaja, the Prince of Midtown. We call him the Sheriff, because he gets very bossy with other dogs, so we call him the Sheriff. Uh, my boyfriend calls him Sugar Booger. He's Sugar Booger. Bubba, we call him Bubba. But Robbie's his name. All right, you guys, it's about 8.30 in the morning. I am just brushing out my hair from the shower. Um, I know there's lots of videos on YouTube that are like get ready with me videos. I've had to watch a few of them because typically if I'm not filming, if I'm not, before I was on YouTube, I would uh, not wear makeup. I'm not someone that typically wears makeup, M mostly because I'm a very girly girl, but I'm not that girly, first of all. And second of all, my life before YouTube was spent in yoga shalas, really hot and sweaty shalas. So there was really no point in wearing makeup. So um, I had to learn how to do makeup for YouTube and I still don't really know how to do makeup. I just do the bare minimum um, so that your face isn't flushed out. So um, typically I do my, ma uh, my makeup before I dry my hair. So I think today, let me get my, oh, I have some right here. I'm just gonna do some like powder. I only really do like, I have um, this cream sometimes I use if I feel like super pale. Oh, I'll just put a little bit on. I don't feel very pale right now, but I'm just gonna put a little on to show you guys. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this like cream on this little sponge. I know a lot of the professional makeup artists, they will put, um, that I've watched, they will put the foundation on last and the powder on last. I always do it first. Just how I, I don't know, but I don't wear like extensive, I don't, you know, they, they are very, very skilled in like the art of putting makeup on. They do a lot of different Shad eyeshadows and different types of eyeliners and that's just not me it's not something that I, mean, I respect trust me I respect makeup artists to be able to transform someone's face by makeup is pretty remarkable they're definitely artists within their own right but I am that is not you know not my talent <laughs> it's not a talent that that I possess so I kind of start with that Sometimes, like I said, I was typically just gonna wear powder today, but I just wanna show you guys when I'm feeling kind of pale just because of the camera, because of the light that we have that hits the face. Um, very important, I feel like, to kind of 
adapt your skin so you're not shiny on camera. Um, I'm just gonna tap, I'm just gonna lose a little bit of, of loose powder on top of that. I don't know if you guys can see a huge... Hold on one second, my nose is running. Hold on. I don't know if you guys can see the difference in the, the tone of skin from without makeup to having makeup on. And yes, before anybody asks, I am sitting on the floor in my bedroom at my mirror. This is something I've done since I was like in high school. I used to do my hair, and actually, I do. I'll dry my hair in the in the in the um, bathroom, but I'll do my hair by the mirror again. It's just easier. It's it's uh, you know some people have vanity sets in their in their bathroom to do hair or do makeup. I don't. Again, I live in a very small apartment in the middle of a city, so you just make do with what you got. All right, so I'm gonna do some eye shadow. Now, typically, I've watched different tutorials on like different eye colors and what colors are best for different eye colors. And apparently, pinkish eye shadow works really well for people with brown eyes. And I have blue eyes, but I really enjoy, I'm digging the pink eye shadow. I've been wearing it for a couple of months now and I get so many messages from you guys um, about my eye shadow. And it's literally, it's from Physicians Formula. I get, I get my makeup at the gas station, or not, I'm sorry, I get my makeup at the pharmacy, like like a CVS or Target. I don't typically buy super expensive makeup like some people do. Like my mom always wore Lancome uh, makeup, or she would have to go to the mall to get expensive makeup. Um, sometimes I'll buy expensive like eyeshadow or um, mascara that lasts for a while but no i mean like the mascara i'm using today is also physician's formula uh so i use a little tint of pink as of now or i'll use um kind of a more neutral color for my eyeshadow especially for filming in the daytime um and so this is what i use as you can see it's kind of messy because eyeshadow is messy i've used a lot of the the pink um, eyeshadow, I really dig it. And again, I have, I have, uh, I have blue eyes. So and apparently blue eyed people are not supposed to wear pink eyeshadow, but it seems to work for me. Um, I do use a brown eyeliner, which again is apparently really good for, that is really good for blue eyed people is the brown eyeliners from what the experts say. Uh, but you just gotta work, do what works for you. Even though, you know, you might have blue eyes or green eyes or brown eyes or whatever. Um, I think every shade is different anyway. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of eyeliner on. Again, not something I would typically do if I wasn't filming. If I wasn't filming, I would not have any makeup on whatsoever. Very light brown color. I guess more of a subtle color, which I think is the best. You know, my mother used to say more or less is more and simply elegant to us growing up. I have to really focus with mascara so I don't mess it up. And then after I finish this, I'm gonna go dry my hair.
All right, so just dried my hair and I've got my straightener plugged in. I'm just gonna run a quick straightener through it so it doesn't go wild and um, put my jewelry on. I've got my evil eye necklace on so I can <laughs> push the evil covens away. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna do my hair now. All right, everybody, there's Miss Shanti from Aquarius Rise in Africa. We're all set up. We're about to do our show that will air on Sunday morning. By the time this by the time this vlog airs, this episode will have already already aired, but this is all for the shadow work challenge. And so we're about to talk about the, the 21 days of sun salutation. So all right, you guys, we can't we I'm not gonna film while we're doing our actual filming, so you'll have to check our channels out for that. But make sure if you are if you have not subscribed to Aquarius Rising Africa or Solutions by Aquarius Rising Africa, go ahead and subscribe because they are our sister. Like I consider y'all like sister channels, so so we're, we're all we're all yeah. on the same. As Shanti and I were just saying, you know, our souls must have been real bored because we decided to come back for this shit show. So because it's real interesting right now on Earth. So what an amusement it's park it is. <laughs> Um, this is like the Mac has. Daddy. Yeah, it's the Mac Daddy of amusement parks <laughs> our souls decided to come to. So make sure you check out both her channel and my obviously you're on my channel and um and yeah, all right guys, I'm gonna turn this off because you can't see you can't see this video. So I just finished up with Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa. It's eleven twenty seven AM. I've got the um meeting is downloading right now to edit it i just fixed myself some lunch i fixed some mushroom risotto risotti is that how you say it i'm not italian uh, it's from amy's it's vegetarian and it's got 230 calories i had some crackers before i got on with shanti which was like 160 calories so that's 390 calories so let's just say 400 calories Plus I had some like toast this morning, which is not great for Evata, but I had it anyway. That was like 300 calories maybe. So it's about 700 calories I've had today so far. I'm going to um, download this. I'm gonna edit it, start processing it. I've got a load of clothes in the uh, wash that I'm gonna flip to the dryer. And then a little bit later, we're gonna take the dog out on a walk. You get to go on a walk with us. Okay, so I just finished um, getting it ready to edit. So it's so much easier to edit um, interviews that I do. I don't have to put a whole lot in, so I can just get through the editing process pretty quickly. It's 11.55 a.m. I also put the clothes in the dryer. And so I'm gonna finish up, uh, hopefully this video will download pretty quickly. Um, and I can make the thumbnail, get it ready and locked and, wrote it, uh, locked and loaded for tomorrow, for Sunday morning and then you guys can come out on a walk with my boyfriend and my dog and me. So this is where there's a little food court back there. You see that Chick Fil A, the Bowie there. That's where the B O M B scare was the other day. There's the W Hotel. That's the High Museum Park, right there, on Peachtree Street, which is like the never-ending road of Atlanta. It goes like all the way up into the suburbs. There's the Church of Christian Scientists. That's been there forever. So, we're in the middle of Midtown, and there's this old house here that's been here forever. It's like a a private restaurant now. It's very fascinating. It's right across the street from the High Museum. It's a very old building. I almost covered it once right when I first started my channel, but I can't remember why I didn't cover it. I ended up not covering it when I was focused primarily on stuff in Georgia. Now I've expanded <laughs> way outside of Georgia, but um, here it is, the castle. It's called the castle. 
Fort Peace, known to the Atlantans as the castle because it's a granite. So we have a lot of granite around the land, you guys know from the Georgia Guidestones. Um, and yeah, it's a restaurant, very swanky restaurant now here. MARTA is our public transportation system here in Atlanta. Again, high still over there. We're on 15th Street right now. You can call, we've gone all back here before exploring. You just have some little pathways back here. There's the house. Here is one of our MARTA stations. It's like our subway our underground we don't use the underground that much so here most people drive because in the summertime it's so hot here that like there's no way you want to be underground on a train in this heat but that's the marta station one of them one of the many this is west peach street lots of fun little restaurants and things to do here on west peach street that's the Artmore Hotel. It's kind of a famous hotel here in Atlanta. It's allegedly haunted. I say allegedly, but I absolutely believe it is because everything's haunted down here. But yeah, that's one of the famous hotels here. Robbie, it's a tuk-tuk. It's from your country, Robbie. It's a tuk-tuk, a rickshaw. That's from your country. All right, you guys, we're crossing over. The, what we call the connector here in Atlanta. It's the connector because it's where 75 and 85, Interstate 75 and Interstate 85, join together and they split off. Look at that Atlanta traffic. Look at all that traffic coming in. So this traffic, this is going out of the city. And that other side, that's going into the city. Look at that traffic, you guys. Welcome to Atlanta. We full. Everywhere in Atlanta is a freaking parking lot most of the time. <laughs> so we're on the other side of the freeway. This is now technically Atlantic Station. Um, behind these buildings is like a big outdoor mall. Um, if you've ever been to Los Angeles, the mall at Atlantic Station is a lot like the Grove in um, Los Angeles. We're here checking out the Ark of Atlanta. Thank you, dude. I don't know if I can get all of this, but do you guys actually see what they say? They actually say this is a portal. It says, the Millennium Gate is dedicated to the peaceful accomplishments that have been shaped, that have shaped the Western world. The United States of America and the city of Atlanta over the two millennia since the birth of Christ, a symbolic portal into the city. The ensemble refers to the Egyptian, Greek, and Roman civilization. The foundation of Western culture the statues of justice and peace represent Greek and Greece, respectively. The Ark represents Rome and is based on the Ark of Titus. Cities are the engines of contemporary society, and citizens are obligated to the best of their abilities to make their city better than the one in which they were born. 18th century Georgia, one of the 13 original colonies, led to establish this tradition and heritage in America. Her citizens first created the sublime city of Savannah, one of the world's most extraordinary urban plants, and making any of our cities more beautiful. We nurture our children and grandchildren. We honor our ancestors, our history, and, the, and ultimately God. We have tried to do the Millennium Gate. What do you guys think of that? What? Yeah, that's pretty suspicious if you ask me. Alright, 
Ravi and my boyfriend are down there. He actually, so days when I um, have to work a lot, he sweetly volunteers to take my dog out for me. And he was down here exploring the other day. I drive over here a lot to go to Target. And he was like, holy shit, we have to go actually explore this park because there's so much symbolic shit here. So that's why we're here today. We decided to take you guys along with us for our walk. So we're coming down into the park right now. There it is from here. We're gonna walk over. I've actually, I, was, I think I just said, I've never actually been into this park before. I drive, I drive past this all the time to go to Target because Target's right back there. Uh, but I've never actually walked into this park. So this is a first for me to be walking in here. Isn't that crazy about cities though? I think a lot of city dwellers can understand that. You just drive by so many places and you never really go in. So we're actually walking back through Atlantic Station. Thought we'd give you guys a bit of a tour of it. I was saying this is a really good restaurant, Yard House. Whoops. Um, they have a really good veggie burger at Yard House. Hey, buddy. There's lots of restaurants here. You can live in the apartments up here. Oh, this is Atlantic Station. Okay, God, my hair is a mess. I'm all flushed. We just got back from our walk with Ravi. I hope you guys enjoyed that little tour of a part of Atlanta. Um, um, I'm waiting for the clothes to finish in the dryer. I just finished up loading uh, Shanti's video I did with her this morning. I've made the thumbnail and it's in the it's in processing right now. Um, for tomorrow, for it to air Sunday at 11 a.m. Now, I know you guys will get this video way after that episode airs, but currently it is now about 2.30 in the afternoon. I think that I'm actually gonna do a little bit of stretching since we did about three mile, a three mile walk just to kind of loosen up my hamstrings a little bit. And then I'll probably fold the laundry when it's done and I'll start to wind down my day. I know it's kind of early for a Saturday, but I am getting up early tomorrow because I teach on Sundays. So, um, so yeah. All right, you guys, back where it all started. I'm back in the bed. I just took a really hot bath. I had some dinner of spaghetti marinara, but the spaghetti was made out of zucchini and lentils. Just taking an early night tonight. I'm gonna get up really early tomorrow morning and exercise before I teach. So I'm gonna go to bed early tonight. I'm not feeling that great. I got a bit of a headache also. So yeah, I'm hitting the bed early. I'm um, gonna watch some movies, just chill out. Um, yeah, so I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It is almost seven o'clock on Sunday morning. My morning has not gone as planned, and that is because I went to bed last night with a really, really bad migraine headache. Um, it was real bad. And so I allowed myself the opportunity to sleep in this morning. Um, I'm going to be leaving to teach my yoga class in a couple, in probably about 20 minutes. Uh, I did not do my workout this morning, but that's okay. I'm going to do a bar class this afternoon, uh, which I will take you guys along the ride with. I'm still on my cycle, so I didn't feel so guilty about not exercising this morning because technically I am still on my cycle. But basically, I'm going to go teach my yoga class, and then I have a video to do with Emmy today around noon. And then after that, I will be doing a bar class. And hopefully by then, all remnants of my headache, my migraine will be gone. All right, you guys. So you're going to come along with me to teach my class.
long way to Sacred Garden this morning. I'm in Marietta right now because I wanted to show you guys, take a few minutes to just show you guys some of these beautiful old southern homes. So Marietta is a suburb. It's now it's, oh, before I get into it, this hospital I'm facing right now, this is where both of my nieces were born. Uh, my niece Jacqueline was born here and my youngest niece, niece May was born here at this hospital. So Marietta at one point was not a suburb of Atlanta. At one point Marietta was its own southern town outside of Atlanta. But because Atlanta has grown so big, Marietta is now considered the suburbs. Um, literally most people who are from Marietta when they are traveling outside of the state of Georgia somebody asks them where they're from they will typically just say Atlanta because Marietta is a suburb of the city it takes me so um, for me I live in Midtown right in the middle of the city of Atlanta on Sunday morning without traffic it usually takes me like 20 minutes to get here so that's how quickly it takes me to get here using the freeway now during the weekday if I were to make this drive it would probably take about an hour um, because of traffic but again Marietta was a very very old southern town and these houses that we're gonna drive past here are very very old southern houses and they are gorgeous southern houses are so beautiful these old I grew up around old Old, old, old southern homes. Um, very old. Um, this is a very Republican area, which makes sense because many wealthy people, rich people are Democrats. Wealthy people are Republicans. There's a difference between being wealthy and being rich. We know that. Huge difference between wealth and rich. Um, so all these old, very southern. Now there are a couple of homes here that had big bite and signs and stuff like that, but most of these homes here are very, uh, very old southern families. And that's the cool thing. So Sacred Garden is right there. It's in this neighborhood. A bunch of houses. Um, these houses around here get real decked out for the holidays, which is cool, like Christmas and Halloween and stuff. So that's Sacred Garden. Um, that's a cool little coffee shop right there. And I'm just going to park on the street here. All right, you guys. So for those who've never seen my videos from Sacred Garden, this is the front room. I just got in here just setting up um, my class. I checked, just checked my schedule. I've uh, got a packed class again. I love my Sunday morning classes. They get real busy and I love it. Um, I'm not going to show you the schedule though because people's names are on it and I don't want to dox anyone because that's not cool. Doxing is also a federal offense as well, so <laughs> don't dox people. This is the practice room. Um, I don't, I, I, my shoes are still on so I'm not going to go in here, but I did turn the lights on and I've got the heater going um, just to make sure the room is nice and warm for the class to begin. Tomorrow is a moon day or tonight is the new moon and it's a... Um, a while, usually, well, listen, both full moon and new moon are potent. They both are, but potent in, potent in different ways. Full moon, in my opinion, is the more dangerous of the two moons as far as doing a spiritual practice over the full moon, um, just because of the pull of the moon uh, with the water and with water in our system. And so typically what we do in a traditional yoga practice is traditionally we do not practice on both full and new moon. Um, and again, I take that more serious with the full moon, the new moon, uh, but the new moon that's happening uh, tonight is going to be, it, in my opinion, it's not as dangerous as the full moon because there is no, you know, the, 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 um, the new moon, the moon is completely blacked out. And so, but with this one, there is a crazy solar flare that's happening as well. And it's, uh, Emmy and I are actually going to film about it later today. And that video will probably have aired before this video airs. But so you guys probably already are aware of what I'm talking about. There's a crazy solar flare that's happening. And I don't know all the details about it. We've had a lot of crazy solar flares. But this one is going to last longer than most of the solar flares that we've had thus far. So 
I'm thinking today with my class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start us off with the um, traditional Ashtanga with the sun salutations, the fundamental sequence and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm probably going to move the class into some really deep hip openers. Um, you know, it's, it's rough when we have this, um, these times in our astrological cycles where things are really chaotic you know, like Mercury retrograde, um, some of these solar flares, they can be really, really hard and really, really rough. However, they're necessary. They're necessary. Deconstruction is always necessary. You cannot, you cannot build a new pattern or a new you on a faulty foundation, right? And so that's why that's why when you go through spirituality, like so many people think when they start a spiritual practice that it's gonna be just like rainbows and butterflies and it's just gonna be awesome and wonderful and that's not the case because you have to deconstruct first. You have to pull down your old systems of belief, your old patterning, your old um, illusions or maya as the yoga sutras say, in order to then establish new patterns of belief, new understandings. And the deconstruction just deconstruction period can be really hard on the student. It can be really hard on the human being to have to go through that. And so that's why a lot of times we call it the dark night of the soul. You start to question your own reality, all that kind of stuff. And so deconstruction is necessary. It's rough, but it's necessary, but also knowledge is power. So if you know it's coming, if you know that there's going to be some, some turbulence ahead, you know, you can put your seatbelt on and you can, um, just, you can just reflect on it instead of react to it and just understand that it's necessary. And when those feelings come up, the uncomfortable feelings, the tears, all that, st all that stuff starts to come up, let it happen, but don't project it onto other people and journal and work through it because it's necessary. Deconstruction is always necessary in order for there to be actual new construction. All right, you guys, it is 11 to 12 a.m. I am just now leaving Sacred Garden. My class ended technically at 10. I feel so bad. Halfway through the class, our internet cut out. So um, some of the students who are on Zoom missed the back half of the class. Well, we're gonna fix that, it's no big deal. These things happen, right? But anyway, my class ended around 10. I'm, not, I'm just now leaving because I was chit-chatting with some of my students after class. A lot of times we'll sit and have like, um, philosophy talks uh, after class. So that's what I'm doing now. We got an ambulance coming up here. Um, uh, whenever amb an ambulance would come as children, my mother would always stop and say a prayer for whoever that ambulance is going to. But anyway, um, over there past all those trees is the Marietta Square, which uh, is a fun little area of Marietta. It's old historic downtown Marietta. So I'm heading home now. I'm actually gonna stop by the gas station <laughs> on the way home. And I am craving, I am freaking craving Pop-Tarts right now and a Diet Coke. And I know if you leave a comment about how bad Pop-Tarts and Diet Coke are for you in the comment section below. I will delete the comment. I know they're bad for you, okay? I know that, but I'm craving it right now. I'm on my period and um, and yeah, so it just is what it is. But after I get the Pop-Tart and the Diet Coke, I'm gonna head back home and start getting ready. I'm gonna be filming with Emmy around two o'clock. We were gonna do noon, but I think we're gonna push it back to two for, um, for the astrology that's coming up with the solar flare that's coming up. And then hopefully I'll have a chance to do a bar class after that.
You got your magic ears. Hi. Hi. Did you have a good morning? I missed him. I missed him. Did you have a good morning? Hi, buddy. I know. Are you going to bring me a toy? Which toy are you going to? Oh, I see. Oh, you brought your acorn. You brought your acorn. Ravi, did you have a good morning? By himself while Mama was teaching? Did you have a good morning while Mama was teaching? He's a big boy. He stays by himself on Sunday when Mama goes to teach. Oh, he's a good boy. He's a mama good boy. Ravi, are you Mama's best boy? Are you Mama's best boy? I see your acorn. That's one of your favorite toys. Most dogs will give you a toy. Ravi just likes to show you a toy. <laughs> oh, are you gonna give it to me now? You just threw your acorn down. Hi, buddy. Did you have a good morning? Did you have a good morning? I love you so much. Oh, I love him so much. I love him so much. He's just a good boy. He's a good boy. Stay by himself on Sunday. He just now has gotten to the point where he's able to completely stay by himself without having to be put up. He gets to stay by himself because he doesn't get anything into things anymore. He's a good boy. Bobby, I'm so proud of you. What'd you do this morning? Were you meditating? What'd you do by yourself, Bubby? Are you meditating? Or are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Oh, he's a handsome boy. He's so handsome. He's such a pretty dog that everybody thinks he's a girl. <laughs> They're always like, she's so pretty. We're like, it's a he. He's got a wiener. <laughs> he's got a wiener. He does. He's got a wiener. He sure is a pretty boy. All right, so I'm eating a, on top of the pop, pop tarts that I ate driving home, I'm going to be having a um, spinach and goat cheese pizza, little pizza. I'm actually doing pretty good with my calorie intake today. Uh, the last couple of days, I've not been doing good with my calorie intake. I've been really below target. Uh, but today I already, already had some egg in the holes and those two Pop-Tarts. Again, no comments in the comment section about the Pop-Tarts, guys. I know they're bad for you. I know that. I know that. Relax. Just relax. And now I'm eating a spinach and goat cheese pizza for lunch. And then I'm going to be watching the show traders and then filming with Emmy a little bit later. And then you guys will join me. Hopefully, if I can make it, join me with an, in a bar class. All right, so it's almost four o'clock. I just got off of my filming with uh, Emmy for Monday's video. And um, I had a little come to Jesus moment, come to Yahshua moment. And I talked about this in the video with Emmy. You know, we talk about shadow work and that's why I'm doing this is because we had a subscriber ask for me to blog about how I squeeze in all of my shadow work and all my exercising and my journaling. And I've spoken about this on the channel before, you know, when a lady's on her period for the first two to three days, she should be resting because her body's detoxing. And last night I had a migraine headache. Today's my third day on my cycle. And I, and I, so I let myself sleep in a little bit because of my migraine. I was like, I'll just do a bar class after I film with Emmy. And I realized that that's my shadow work. I put so much pressure on myself and sometimes I have the propensity to over-exercise, to do too much. And I realized in this moment all day I've been trying to pressure myself and pressure myself when I am on my cycle. This is the third day of my cycle. I should be resting. So here you go, guys. This is where I struggle. And so I decided that for today, as I did yesterday, 
it's going to be another day of rest for me and i will start back again tomorrow morning back with my regularly planned exercise because it'll be day four and so therefore i'll be able to get back to um to regular because my uterus will not be contracting anymore and so right now what i'm doing is i'm waiting for emmy's episode to download so i can prep it for tomorrow and i'm gonna make myself some noodles um, so I've, I've done pretty good today on my calories. The last few days I've been very under on my calories, but today I'm going to end up around 2000 calories. So that's really, really good. I am going to try to go to bed again early tonight to get some rest. And then tomorrow morning, I'll be back up at four o'clock starting my day. I was just talking to my good friend, Catherine Edwards and, um, just something I want to address for this video. Once again, the darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can only thing the darkness can do is steal from the light and invert. With that being said, evil eyes, as in evil eye necklaces, are not the Illuminati eye, the eye of Horus. And the eye of Horus itself isn't that either, but they don't even look like the eye of Horus. The evil eye is used by countless cultures in the Far East. Like this really pisses me off. And it shows so much ignorance when somebody calls the evil eye the Illuminati eye. You have literally offended, if you're that person, half of the human population. You need to do your research. Everyone needs to do their research before they start. This is no, there's no fucking witch trials going on. This is what scares me so much about this community. Some people in this quote unquote truther community have more hate in their hearts than the controllers do. They're out for blood. They wanna destroy everything. They wanna destroy all these cultures that they just simply don't understand. It's disgusting. When I started the Mysore Foundation and I was trying to raise money to work with children in the slums to get them into safe houses, do you know what some Christians told me? That they wouldn't give me money because little Hindu children are gonna to go to hell anyway. That's fucking disgusting. And to hear somebody call out an evil eye that's not the Illumin, they're two different things. An evil eye is used all over the East as part of their culture and wards off evil spells. That's what it does, it wards off evil. It's a protection. Do better, be better. Stop being so fucking ignorant because that is what puts us in the hangman's noose. You want to go into bloodshed? Continue the vigilante attitude and we're going to see hell like we've never seen hell. You want to go into the light? Then start researching and start realizing that darkness can't create anything. Only the light can. Stop it, guys. I will start blocking people who start putting this shit up on my channel because it's not going to fly with me. This whole not researching and just going around blaming people is, is not going to fly with me. You're going to have to do better. All right, you guys, I just got out of a hot bath. It's about eight o'clock. I'm still waiting for my video from Emmy earlier today to finish processing so I can load it up for tomorrow. Um, after I loaded the video, I had an awesome conversation, telephone conversation with Kelly from Nexium. I keep saying, saying Kelly from Nexium because she's so much more than, than that, but awesome conversation with her. I've been chatting with Tamara as well. And, um, and yeah, guys, going forward, let's just be really, really mindful about what we're saying on the internet um, that really upset me the evil eye comment an evil eye is not the same thing as the illuminati eye an evil eye is done in so many different cultures it's to ward off uh spells black magic and i i just want all of my friends out there that are from the east that are from eastern cultures that use the evil eye to know that you are loved and you are supported and um I'm so sorry that there are people out there that have that much, much hatred in their heart that they would label something from your culture as being so evil when it's not. And let's just do better, guys. Like, let's really do better. And sometimes I worry because it's like all of 
there's so many truth truthers in this community out there that are more violent than the controllers are. And that's what scares me. You can't, as Catherine Edwards has said, you can't fix the problem the controllers created as the same means as the controller. You can't meet violence with more violence. And the darkness can't create anything anyway. Only the light can create. So everything, even the Eye of Horus, that's the Illuminati Eye, was originally for good. And if we got rid of everything that the Cabal inverted, we would have nothing left. Our side of this battle is about... Our side of this battle is about love and healing. Our God is the God of life and is the God of healing. The God of the other side is the God of destruction and war and blood and violence. So if you're someone that's out there to destroy, then maybe you aren't on our side. Maybe you're on the other side. So it's just something to think about. What God do you serve? Do you serve the God of destruction? Or do you serve the God of healing? The choice is yours. But anyway, guys, um, thank you for spending the weekend with me. Tomorrow morning, I will be right back on my mat with all of you guys. Thank you for giving me a moment to honor my own shadow side as I work through my period and feeling the need to exercise when I really shouldn't be exercising anyway. Um, let me know how you guys are doing. How's the challenge coming for you guys? What have you learned about yourself? All that stuff. Once again, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. I'll talk to you soon.